If you're clinically online like everyone else these days, chances are you've been exposed to some form of online gambling. Whether it's from ads on TikTok, major sports sponsorships on TV, or you just like watching addicted streamers gamble away millions of dollars in mere minutes. Boom! I need the max win. Even the stock market feels like glorified gambling at this point. And don't even get me started on the crypto market. Like I was saying, it's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. But only a few years ago, online gambling was heavily restricted and was looked down upon by most of the mass media. Only major casinos in cities like Las Vegas would draw in billions of dollars of revenue each year. But nowadays, there's hundreds of different gambling websites all trying to grab your attention with free money and lucrative promotions to get you to buy in. And it's working. So how did we get here? What was once an illegal business, restricted only to the world's elite, has devolved into a glorified Ponzi scheme that can be accessed by anyone with a touch of a button. And it's ruining millions of young people's lives. Well, let's talk about it. Gambling money for entertainment has been around for some time. The earliest known forms of gambling appear in ancient China all the way back in 2000 BC. The game was known as Liubo, which historians believe to be a precursor of chess and consisted of only two players facing one another for a set wager. Liubo was originally restricted only for the wealthy members of society, but would quickly gain traction across China. The Chinese character describing the game would gradually become the accepted term for all forms of gambling. The first form of modern-day gambling was invented back in the 1400s, where an Italian man named Felix Falgieri created the game of Baccarat. Baccarat was essentially a simple guessing game, where players would bet on which of the two hands being dealt would be closer to 9 points, with face cards equaling 0 and aces equaling 1. Baccarat would start a huge gambling craze in Italy, with the first proper casino opening in Venice in 1638, known as Casino de Venezia. This number would grow to over 120 casinos in the next 100 years, and the gambling business would expand outwards across the entire world. By the 19th century, gambling in casinos would make their way out west to the US. Although it was outlawed in most of the country, Louisiana would legalize and license several gambling halls in their capital of New Orleans. New Orleans became the mecca of gambling in the US for over 50 years. Games like Blackjack and Roulette were imported from Europe and quickly rose in popularity, while a new card game known as Poker would dominate most of the casino floor. Gambling was eventually outlawed everywhere in the US by the 1900s, along with Prohibition beginning in 1920. These two major decisions heavily boosted the influence of mobs and gangsters, since they were the only ones able to supply the public with both booze and gambling. Once the drinking and gambling laws were lifted in 1933, these mobsters would set up casinos in places like Las Vegas, Reno, and Atlantic City, which are now known primarily as gambling cities. These early casino years were plagued by corruption, greed, and criminal activity, and is the main reason that casinos developed such a bad reputation, especially for movies. But that all changed in 1966, when designer Jay Sarno designed and opened Caesar's Palace, the first themed resort in Las Vegas. It was a blend between a luxury hotel, a mall, and a high rolling casino, with beautiful open concept rooms filled with bright lights, arcade machines, and card tables. Caesar's Palace would also put on a lot of events to entertain their guests, like boxing fights, live concerts, and stunt performances. It was a wildly successful concept that other casinos would later adopt, turning part of the city into the now infamous Las Vegas Strip. These modern, luxurious resorts glorified the inherent scam that gambling was. The odds of each game were always with the house, but they were carefully designed to give all guests a competitive chance to make money. By masking this shady business model with bright lights, free drinks, and beautiful women, it made people stay longer, letting them spend more and more money at the casino until they were all out of cash. Eventually, you get hooked on the extreme highs of the winds that you can't stop yourself from doing it, since gambling is literally designed to be addictive. While most people know that gambling is bad and you'll likely lose money, 
It's very easy to just throw a few hundred dollars down the drain on a night out, especially when drugs or alcohol are involved. And the government knows this. They strictly regulate these companies to ensure that no games are inherently rigged and that no casino can force anyone to gamble. Unfortunately, that's not really the case for online gambling. The dot-com boom that took place in the early 2000s transitioned over into the gambling world as well, with many forms of online gambling sites spawning left, right, and center. However, the only real success story were poker websites like PokerStars and World Series of Poker, which coincided with the huge boom in popularity of the game at the time. Since the internet was so new and unregulated, it was difficult to build user trust and attract people's attention to a gambling website. But as the internet grew in both popularity and complexity, so did gambling websites, eventually getting to the point where they looked just as flashy and colorful as real-life casinos. And once that happened, the real advantages of online gambling started to show. The biggest thing going for online gambling was the convenience. While regular casinos are fun to visit and make a day out of, that's the problem. You're forced to travel to and from a casino and spend time walking around playing different games which gets pretty tiresome. And some people just don't have a casino nearby, so they can't gamble regularly. For online gambling, none of these barriers apply. With just a few clicks on your phone, you're able to play any slot or table game you want at any time throughout the day. There's no hassle to pick an outfit for the night or withdraw money. Just deposit it straight into your account and boom, you're back to your dopamine hits. Spending money is also way easier. Playing with real cash at a casino helps you stay grounded, since the physical act of placing bets helps you understand the risks you're taking. But for online gambling, your money is just another number on the screen. It's hard to quantify how much you're winning and losing when there's no physical evidence to show you, which makes quitting even more difficult. But with that being said, online gambling still really hadn't taken off during the early 2010s. But that all changed in 2018, when two major events would unintentionally explode the gambling industry. The first domino to fall was the Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act of 1992, or PASPA for short. This law essentially prohibited any form of sports betting to occur anywhere in the US for over 25 years. But in 2018, this law was overturned on the grounds of it being unconstitutional. This allowed online gambling sites to expand into the sports betting market, which was great for multiple reasons. Most gambling sites at the time only offered slots and a few table games. And while these are great for making money, they're not great for attracting customers. But with sports gambling, it was much easier to attract casual gamblers, since they're able to place bets on a real-life event that they've already enjoyed watching. Couple that with lucrative sign-up offers and weekly promotions, and it became that much easier for online gambling companies to attract new customers. And once you're ingrained into their system, you're much more likely to dive into casino games and slots to spend even more time and money on their website. Once this law was overturned, venture capitalists and major investors took notice and started pumping an insane amount of money into these startup websites. Apps like FanDuel, DraftKings, and Bet365 quickly took off reporting absurdly high revenues each quarter with little to no operating costs. This excess money let them spend even more on advertisement, further ingraining themselves into the biggest professional sports leagues in the world. Nowadays, every sports broadcast has a banner or a sponsored segment promoting a different gambling website to their viewers, with A-list celebrities popping up everywhere in advertisements to tell you to gamble. They even went after the athletes themselves and sponsored them too, like, why is Wayne Gretzky popping up in every ad telling me to use BetMGM? I'm just trying to watch hockey, man. Leave me alone. <laughs> and while sports gambling is extremely profitable, the real money was still in their online casinos. Fortunately, major event number two would make it easier than ever to get into slots, thanks to the rise of cryptocurrency. At the tail end of 2017, Bitcoin would see a huge explosion in value jumping from $3,000 per coin to just under $20,000 by the end of the year. And while its price would fall back down pretty quickly, this spike caught a lot of people's attention and brought a lot of eyes to the crypto market. And I could go off on another tangent about all the shit that crypto has caused, 
the pump and dumps. And I support Save the Kids Token. Save the Kids Token. NFTs. <laughs> And other crypto scams that influencers have pulled off. September 1st, CryptoZoo.co. Stop! You violated the law. But maybe that's for another video. For people with lots of spare cash, crypto became less of an investment opportunity and more of a digital currency, using it for things like online shopping and food delivery. But there was no better place to dump your newfound currency than on gambling websites. More specifically, on stake. Stake is an online gambling site founded by Ed Craven back in 2017. It included both a sports betting and casino section of its website, but it was clear that Stake's emphasis was on casino games. Their website had all the most popular slot and table games available, but their real hit was their Stake originals. Games like Plinko, Crash, Mines, and Hilo were very simple yet immensely popular, especially on Twitch. The major growth of live streaming in 2020 paved the way for Stake to take over. As many of the top streamers like XQC, Trainrex, and Aiden Ross began gambling on the website. In just one year, Stake's annual revenue went from $100 million to over a billion, thanks in large part to its success on Twitch. But Stake sparked a lot of controversy online, and most of it was because of their actions behind the scenes. The first glaring concern is Stake's gambling regulations, or rather, their complete lack of existence. Stake's main headquarters is located in Curaçao, a small Caribbean island that's become an outpost for gambling site operators. Curaçao only recently became an independent country back in 2010, and has few available options for economic growth. Gambling operations like Stake took advantage of their low tax rates, corrupt banking system, and non-existent gambling regulations to set up shop in the country and obtain a gambling license. This means that companies and slot suppliers like Stake, NetEnt, and Pragmatic can rig the odds of any game however they want without you knowing, and there's virtually no punishment for doing so. But user trust has always been an issue for gambling sites like Stake. So why were so many people suddenly using the website? Well, that's where the streaming impact comes into play. You see, the streamers who were gambling on Stake weren't actually using their own money, but rather, they were getting bankrolled by Stake to gamble for hours a day. These streamers would spend millions of dollars per stream with no risk whatsoever, since they could just ask the CEO for more money. These deals, they cut the risk and they cut the reward and make it a stagnant promotional dog shit that shows something that is not real. It's a fantasy, it's fake. And when they did hit it big and win millions of dollars, the clips would go viral giving fans the wrong impression that they could win big too. But of course, they wouldn't. And Stake's profits would just keep rising. This behavior was not only morally wrong, but borderline illegal, since initially it was kept a secret. It was only after intense scrutiny from other creators on the platform did the streamers start actually revealing to their audience that they were sponsored and bankrolled by Stake. But at that point, it was too late since they had already gotten their young fans to sign up and throw away money on the website. And most of the people were underage. But since Stake didn't require any ID proof, or rather, didn't care to enforce it, so they let these young people with disposable income and no responsibilities develop heavy gambling addictions from a young age. And the negative effects of gambling only multiply for people with ADHD. It's no secret that there's been a large increase in kids with ADHD over the past 10 years. Studies indicate that nearly one in eight children in the US will receive an ADHD diagnosis sometime in their life. And of those 7 million kids, at least 15% are likely to develop serious gambling issues. Gambling is already widely considered to be the deadliest addiction. An estimated 50,000 people commit suicide each year due to compulsive gambling habits. Now imagine you're 12 years old, watching your favorite streamer freak out as they win $5 million on a shiny colorful slot game. Chances are, you're gonna give it a try. And even if you don't, the idea of hitting it big will stay with you, especially if you have an attention disorder. And the funniest part to me is when these streamers try to justify it. They put disclaimers in their titles that gambling is bad or try and convince people that they're causing no harm. But the reality is, Stake wouldn't be paying them if it wasn't working. 
Telling people not to gamble and then shitting your pants five minutes later when you win a million dollars doesn't really make it okay. That's not how it works. It's like when Apple promotes their employee equity and diversity, knowing damn well they have sweatshops in China pumping out their iPhones for like 20 cents a day. And even though governments are starting to crack down on online gambling, it doesn't really matter because companies like Stake can literally never lose money. Since casinos always have the edge, the law of large numbers applies. This law basically means that once any data sample gets big enough, the expected outcome and biases will always appear. Imagine if you flipped a coin 10 times, and you get 7 heads and 3 tails. You know that a coin flip is generally 50-50, but in a small data set, one result may appear more likely than the other. But if you flipped a coin a thousand times, the outcome starts to look much more even. Now, take a look at a casino's profit margin. Even if their games only give them a 1-2% edge, they'll always make a steady profit in the long run. Sure, there might be a few people that hit the jackpot and they lose a few million dollars, but the other billion spins that hit nothing will make up for it, and the profits just keep rising with each new player. Even if it's just 10 or $20 a person, that money adds up fast. And somehow, it got even worse in 2022. A Twitch ban on gambling forced gambling streamers to come together and launch a new streaming service known as Kick. Kick promised a much better rate for subscribers than Twitch did, and its content restrictions were much less severe. And oh yeah, by the way, guess who the majority shareholder in Kick was? <laughs> boy. Most of Kick's content was either gambling streams or softcore porn, so it didn't start out well. But since Stake was raking in billions of dollars a year, they were able to spend lucrative amounts of money to basically buy out popular streamers and bring them over to their platform. And even if those streamers weren't known for gambling, their fans had to download Kick to watch them, which gives them easy access to hundreds of gambling streams, repeating the vicious cycle once again. So, how do we fix it? I mean, I don't know. I'm not God. But seriously, I don't think there's an easy fix. The online gambling industry is making billions of dollars a year, and that number is only going up. It's ingrained in literally every form of media you can watch. TV, YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, sports. Shit, I wouldn't be surprised if steak sponsored like Guatemala or the Bahamas at the Olympics this summer. The best you can do is just try your best not to gamble and get sucked in. Or just sign up and use their promotions and make yourself a couple hundred bucks. But be careful. Cause all it takes is one big win on a slot or a fight. To get you hooked for life. Fuck, I really want to gamble now. <laughs>